Hey family, this is Lady Wisdom with the question, what is it that is holding you back? What is that one thing? It may be that one thing that is preventing you from accomplishing what it is that you desire to accomplish. It could be something as simple, well, maybe not simple, as fear. Why are you afraid? What will it take for you to overcome that fear? Think about that and change the narrative that lies between your ears and you'll be able to accomplish that goal. Changing the narrative. Make sure you stay connected. My journey with Paula G is streaming across a variety of platforms. And remember that greatest conversation you will ever have is the one that's taking place in between your ears while you're speaking to yourself. Embrace the journey. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Crystal Henry Show and welcome to my kitchen. I'm so excited that you have joined me today. You will learn positive, powerful, and prolific experiences that come straight from my life. I'm a visibility coach, an eight-time Amazon best-selling author, speaker, podcaster, magazine publicist, and an evangelist who is made to lead millions. I coach people from their what ifs to their what is. Now I've had many things that have come in my life to set me back and make me crumble, but instead I became a campaigner of comebacks. I've come back from hurt, rejection, illness, pain, and betrayal, and so can you. So it's time for us to proclaim our purpose and declare our destiny right here on The Crystal Henry Show. Make sure you connect with me at crystalhenry.net. I want to say thanks a million to the underwriters and silent partners that help underwrite The Crystal Henry Show. Thanks so much. Now, let's grab a paper, pen, and maybe even a friend, and let's dive into the word for today. We are talking about the but in Proverbs. Yes, in Proverbs, we have um, great lessons that take us from wisdom Um, in intuition. um, It takes us through the right versus the wrong, the evil versus the good. So we're going to get a great lesson on today from the but that shows up in Proverbs. So let's pray first and then dive into this lesson. Most gracious God in heaven, we bless your name. We praise you. We honor you, oh God. We ask you, Father God, to just move by your spirit on today. We pray that all the watchers, all the extraordinary people are blessed by this word that you will teach us, guide us, and most of all, give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Father, we thank you for your greatness and your goodness, Lord. Now have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen again. Again, thank you so much for joining and being a part. Now we're talking about the but in Proverbs. And I'm going to give you an example. Proverbs 10 and 1 states, a wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is the grief of his mother. Now, there are quite a few. There are a lot of buts in Proverbs. And so it gives us a contrast. But is a contrast to a previous statement. It's also a yet. He said this, yet this can happen if you do this or if you don't do this. There's a yet in it. A but means that there's a shift, a change, a transformation. But also means, on the other hand, this may be happening or this is what you need to know. And it's also an intervening statement. So when you read Proverbs, God is giving us a, if this is this, but if you do this. So when we are seeking wisdom, wisdom is the principal thing. That's what we learn from Proverbs. Wisdom is the principal thing. And in all you're getting, get what? An understanding. So I want you to just get, an. I want to give you an overview of the understanding that we need to get from Proverbs. What about, but what about it? But God, but how does that happen? But why? 
that's what this lesson is all about today. Now, wisdom is valuable. It is desirable. Wisdom is also a feminine trait. It, it talks about wisdom as she and her throughout Proverbs. Yeah, women. Yes, ladies. Yes, girl. We are wise. <laughs> and so wisdom is not only valuable, not only desirable and a feminine trait described in the Bible, in the word of God, but it feeds positivity. Wisdom in Proverbs is described and depicted as positive. It wants to promote positive outcomes such as success, prosperity, joy, peace, marriage, harmony, love. What should happen and what should not happen in our lives is depicted in Proverbs. Now, one of the areas, one of the areas that I would like to describe is seeking or head or heeding counsel. That is what Proverbs is about. We need to seek counsel. We need to heed counsel. We need to heed the word of God. And so wise individuals understand the importance of seeking advice and learning from others. Understand this, there are, there are open corrections that are in Proverbs, that are invaluable, that will help you be a better business person, businesswoman, businessman, uh, better entrepreneur, uh, will help you with handling um, conflict. It will help you. So I encourage people to read Proverbs, get all that you can get, get wisdom, get understanding, get knowledge. It even talks about discernment. And we as Christians need to have discernment. Are we in the midst of turmoil because we don't have clarity? We don't have um, understanding of what's going on, that there is confusion going on. So wisdom is a principal thing and we need to get wisdom and we need to get understanding. And so one of the areas that, that the one of the first points that wisdom that is in found in Proverbs is seeking and heeding counsel. So when we read God's word, it's directing us, it's guiding us, it's being a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. So here we have my first example, and I'm going to give you three Proverbs, um, a chapter and a verse that, that will give you an example of what, why we need the but in there, why we need the but in Proverbs. So Proverbs 10 and 1 again reads, a wise son makes a glad father. So as you know, if you have a child and your child is following your instructions, your child is um, doing what he needs or she needs to do, it makes the father glad. An obedient child makes the father glad. Now, um, the father may not be fully engaged in all the things that a mother is fully engaged in. Like most women will be the one to potty train or train with cleaning or um, organizing or putting things together. Um, whereas, you know, the husband or the father is usually out of the household. Nowadays, it, anything could be anything going on. So it may not be that way. However, a wise son makes really not only a glad father, but a glad mother too. However, it says, but here's that contrast that comes in there. But if the son is not wise, if the son is foolish, it is grief to the mother. Why? Because she spent a lot of time like, let me teach you how to do this. Let me teach you how to count money. Let me teach you how to read. Let me teach you how to write. And then there would be other things that the father would teach. So when the son is foolish. It's like you didn't listen to any of the things that I taught you. You didn't listen to any of the things, the ways that I directed you. It's grief. Um, why? We as women are more what? Emotional. We, we are saddened by what? You didn't heed my counsel? Huh? You didn't listen to me? Um, it's embarrassing. 
So there's a grief there. And so that's what this um, not only scripture means, but that but in there. It's a contrast. If your son is wise, the father's going to be glad. However, if your son is foolish, doing foolish things, coming against what has been advised, it's going to be grief, sorrow to the mother. Another area is um, in Proverbs, when we're dealing with Proverbs, we're looking for humility and openness. Openness to what? To learn. The whole purpose of reading Proverbs is to get wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. To learn a lesson before you bump your head learning that lesson of life. Um, have you ever bumped your head? Have you ever experienced your parent, your mother saying, don't go there, don't do that. And then you go and you're like, oh, that's what they meant. Oh, that's so embarrassing. And sometimes we can be so overly um, confident in what we know, the way we want to do things, how we want to do it. And we're not humble enough to receive instruction open enough to learn from our parents' mistakes, learn from our teacher's um, direction. We might not want to learn from our mentor's direction, but Proverbs is about humility and being open enough to learn. Wisdom requires recognizing one's limitations. Well, I'm limited. Yeah, I don't know everything. No one knows everything, but we should all be willing to learn something from somebody. I'm open to learning something from my child. We should be open to learning something from people that are younger than us and people that are older than us, that are more experienced than us. Why? Because being open to learn, um, being open to learn someone else's um, perspective will help us in the long run. So understand that you have limits. And that we all have limits and we need to be open to grow, open to learn. Wisdom means that we're open to being taught. I'm teachable. Are you teachable? I'm willing. I am willing to admit that I have done something wrong. Have you ever met someone that's not willing to, to admit that they were wrong? Not willing to admit that they needed help? not willing to admit that they needed directions. I'm willing to admit I need directions. I need my GPS. And if I don't have my GPS, I'm willing to ask directions. I will write it down so that I can get to my proper destination. And I need to get to my proper place. So we have to be humble enough to know that, you know what? I don't know everything and I need help. That's part of Proverbs. Proverbs will help you get understanding in that area. It will be impactful for your future. So when things go wrong, when, when um, people are too arrogant or too dismissive, um, that is that but part that comes into play in Proverbs. Let me give you another example. Proverbs 12 and 15. And it reads, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes but he who has he he who heeds counsel is wise so if i'm listening if i'm listening to someone guide me through that helps me not fall off the side of the cliff that helps me not stub my toe that helps me turn the light on that helps me go get um an answer then that's what proverbs is telling you if you are a fool, you're going to think, hey, I'm good. I'm good. Mm, I don't need nobody. I, I did this all by myself. Mm -mm. But he who heeds counsel is wise. So listening to someone else, getting in a good group of counsel is necessary. It's necessary so that we can grow, so that we can go, so that we can get on our path to not only righteousness, but our path to wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Wisdom will help you in your growth. Wisdom will help you in your maturity. 
wisdom will help you and those around you. It takes wisdom to understand different levels of business. It takes wisdom. It takes knowledge. You have to have an understanding in order to become an expert in your area. What in the area of if I'm a farmer, I need to be an expert farmer. I need to know um, what it means for the sun, the, the moon, the uh, shifting of the earth, what changing the ground. Um, when do I need to, to uh, prune? When do I need to cut? When do I need to dig up? All of that helps you become an expert. You have to know weather. You have to understand different things of any different type of job. If I'm an electrician, I need to be an expert electrician or it might be harmful to my health or somebody else's. So wisdom that, but if you don't do this, this could happen. And so I love Proverbs 12 and 15. It says the way of a fool seems right in his own eyes. Oh, I think it's, I think that's right. I'm going to do it. And, but if you find out, if you ask questions, then that is wisdom. I don't know everything. Wisdom is, I don't know everything, but can you help me? That takes humility and that takes openness to be able to receive from someone else. Now, my third point is, um, my third point of positivity for Proverbs, the but in Proverbs, moral and ethical living, that's all through Proverbs. It talks about the wayward woman um, doing the wrong thing, drinking too much, eating too much. It talks about greed and gluttony. It, it talks about the misuse of people. There is a moral perpetuity that you will find in Proverbs. Morality and ethics will be found in Proverbs. Wisdom in Proverbs is closely tied to righteousness and ethical behavior. Wise individuals live in accordance with God's commandments. Wise individuals live according to God's will. We obey the laws of the land. We become lenders and not borrowers. We become prosperous and wealthy. We lead a life of integrity and peace. Woo, peace? Yes, the peace that passes all understanding. The peace that guards our heart and mind, that peace, that joy, that harmony, the success, all of that is found in Proverbs. Proverbs 31 woman was what? She was a phenomenal entrepreneur. She was an amazing wife. She was virtuous. She had integrity. She was found at the gates doing great business. She was in fine clothing. She had maid servants. So she didn't have to do it all by herself. She had maid servants. She had people to help her. And in order to be an excellent boss, in order to be a great leader, in order to be a great master, you have got to have wisdom. You have to be humble. You have to be willing to be taught. You have to seek out counsel. You need a mentor. You need someone to coach you. Yes. That's what I'm doing here, coaching you. You need to have morals and you need to have values. You need to live an ethical life. That's what big business does. That's what great business does. Lives according to God's word and will. Moves according to the right, the righteousness. Moves according to the peace, the joy, the harmony. Moves according to wisdom according to understanding, getting knowledge and understanding, gaining clarity. We need clarity to move into the areas that God would have us to move into and go into the spaces that God would have us to go into. We need wisdom to be at the table. At the table is where contracts can be signed and finalized. Even on golf courses, contracts can be um, thought of and brought up um, out on the golf course, and then you bring it to what? The table. And God is saying, I am going to prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies. 
wisdom will tell you, will show you, will guide you on how to deal with your enemies at your table. Oh, that's another word for another message for another day. But God will help you utilize the proper words to say. And reading Proverbs will help you get there at the table in the presence of your enemies. Wisdom will allow you to come out on top, okay? Now, another area, now the opposite, this is the butt side of not heeding wisdom. This is the butt side, the the yet, not that, but the, the shift side, okay? So we talked about the positive side, seeking and heeding counsel, humility and openness to learn, and moral and ethical living. Now let's look at the opposite side. Well, the opposite side is foolishness or folly. It is associated with grief and what shame and what trouble. Dun, 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 dun. Yes, trouble. The opposite side of wisdom means you you might be ashamed. You're going to get in trouble. It's going to cause some grief and some shame. Rejection. Rejection of guidance is not a good thing. Rejection of guidance is foolishness. It is often believed that we know best. It's associated with the people that are prideful or so arrogant that you can't tell me nothing. You can't tell me nothing. I'm not going there. I'm not doing that. Because what? In their mind, they already think that they're right. They already know the way to go. Um, it talks about in Proverbs 12 and 15, it says the way of the fool is right in his own eyes. So if you're rejecting wisdom, if you're rejecting knowledge, then what? You're like, Psh, no. So the other thing is pride and arrogance. That is a key trait of someone who walks in, who lives in folly who is self-important and refuses to learn or to admit mistakes. We got to admit, hey, I did this wrong. Hey, I'm wrong. That is the best part of wisdom. And number three, immoral and impulsive behavior. Foolishness is just, oh, I'm going to do that. Oh, I'm going to do that. You don't stop and think about the consequences to the action. An impulse is moving without thought. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to think my way through. And wisdom allows you to think your way through. Wisdom allows you to get counsel and write it down. So don't operate impulsively. Don't operate unethically. And don't disregard the correct way to do things. Number the third um, Proverbs 15 and five, the third one I want to discuss before we're we're almost done. Time is almost up. A fool despises the father's instructions, but he who receives correction is prudent. Are you ready to be prudent? Are you ready to walk the walk and talk the talk? Are you ready to be wise? Are you ready to have wisdom beyond your years? Well, I encourage you, open up the good book and get in Proverbs because the but, I don't want you to just live in the but God, but I want you to live in wisdom. I want you to walk in wisdom. I want you to flow in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. God is amazing and he wants us all to be wise. He says in his word, my people perish for lack of knowledge. A fool that pushes away, that swats away, that denies knowledge is a fool. But we want to be wise. We want to be ethical. We want to be um, humble. We want to have morals and values. We don't want to reject the good news of the Lord. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this message. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and make sure you come back to the Crystal Henry show. Same place, same time. 
And again, underwriters, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Make sure you connect with me at crystalhenry.net and I will see y'all next time. God bless. Next time, friend. Hey family, this is Lady Wisdom. Do you ever find yourself so focused on your problem that you have difficulty coming up with a solution? Problems are going to come in life. And it's not so much the problem itself. It's how we respond and how we react to that problem in our life. So I challenge you, the next time you have a problem, focus on the solution so you can get past that problem. This is Lady Wisdom, and make sure you stay connected with the TV Talk Show, My Journey with Paula G. Until then, embrace the journey.